Bhakti. Welcome to Knowledge Search Channel. In this video, we will be discussing about uh, a three-phase inverter. So, what do you mean by a three-phase inverter? A three-phase inverter. What is an inverter? Inverter is nothing but it is an it is a device which is going to convert the DC input voltage to the three-phase AC output voltage or single-phase AC output voltage. Okay, inverter is a device which is going to convert the input DC supply to a AC output waveform. The AC output waveform can be single phase or three phase. So, if the particular uh, inverter is producing a three phase output waveform, then that is called as a three phase inverter. If the particular inverter is producing a single phase output waveform, then that inverter is called as a single phase inverter. Yes, you all know a uh, three phase inverter will be having higher power. It is used in high power industries in order to produce high torque and in order to handle high power machines. Okay. So, three phase inverter is an inverter which is going to convert the given DC input voltage. So, the DC input voltage may be from battery or it can be from the solar power station or whatever may be. Okay. So, the DC input voltage is converted to a three phase AC output that is called as a three phase inverter. Okay. So, here uh, in case of three phase inverter, there are two modes of operation. Uh, one is called as uh, 180 degree mode of conduction, the other one is called as the 120 degree mode of conduction. Okay. So, uh, both are having its own plus and minus. So, for example, in case of uh, 180 degree mode of conduction, okay, uh, the rating of the transistors used will be quite less. Okay. That is, the D rating will be there. Whereas, in case of the 120 degree mode of conduction, the rating of devices used will be quite high when compared to 180 degree mode of conduction. But what is the advantage of 180 degree mode is that is the frequency of getting short circuited is very less in case of 120 degree mode of conduction because you are having a small delay between the uh, conduction of two transistors in the same leg and because of which you will observe that in 120 degree mode of conduction, there is very less chance or there is no chance of, of the supply getting short circuited. But we have to use high rating. That is the main uh, drawback in case of the 120 degree mode. Whereas in case of 180 degree mode, there are more chances of getting short circuited. But the voltage rating of the devices used in the DPS inverter will be much reduced. And because of this, the cost also will be reduced. So that is the main reason. Uh, in order to go whether uh, whether you need a high protective device you can go for uh, 120 degree mode if you want uh, quite cheaper device then you can go for the 180 degree mode but nowadays people prefer only 120 degree mode of uh, conduction uh, because uh, safety is more prior when compared to the cost or investment okay so let us go and discuss about uh, 180 degree mode of conduction as well as 120 degree mode of conduction in both uh, three phase uh, inverter circuits okay so this is the uh, actually this is the inverter circuit okay so you are having a dc supply and totally you can see that there are uh, six transistors okay there are six transistors so just a dc supply connected with six transistors and you can see that a three phase load is connected to this uh, transistors in this way so if you use an inverter this is called as a three phase inverter if you use an inverter between the source and the load and if you properly switch on and off this t1 to t6 you will get a three phase output waveform what is the difference between three phase output and single phase output in case of single phase output we will be having only one phase that is r phase whereas in case of three phase output you will be having three different phases r y and b which are 120 degree out of phase with respect to each other for example uh, r phase will be 120 degree out of phase uh, with respect to y phase whereas y phase will be 120 degree out of phase with respect to b phase so similarly uh, from r phase to b phase it will be 240 degree so totally if you uh, add all these things it will be 360 degree and because of which uh, uh, what what to say uh, there, there will be no neutral current if you use the uh, three phase uh, circuit so there will be no neutral current and it will work safely uh, so whenever there is an unbalance the neutral current will be there okay so if you switch on in a correct sequence uh, there will be no neutral current okay so the uh, the main advantage of uh, uh, three phase inverter is what is the advantage of three phase inverter so the inverter uh, three phase inverter is it can be used in high power applications whereas uh, single phase inverter is used only in the low power application that is the main reason we are going for the uh, three phase inverter okay and uh, maybe above uh, 1 kilowatt or above 1.5 kilowatt 
normally they will be preferring the three phase inverter instead of one single phase inverter because the single phase inverter the torque ripples will become very high if you use for high power applications and uh, because of which uh, uh, your quality of output will be reduced much okay so similarly uh, the three phase inverter uh, so it is having uh, as we have already uh, discussed it is having six transistors and you can see that there are uh, six diodes also will be there in some of the books you can see that each and every uh, transistor will be having six diodes or you can see here i am using transistor you can use any switch actually you can use even ser or you can use any uh, uh, igbt or you can use mosfet so depending on requirement so it is just a switch actually it is just a switch okay in some of the book they will be representing as switch okay so here it can be so here in, in order to demonstrate the circuit i am using a transistor so normally if you connect a ser you have to connect a feedback diode or in a transistor also you have to connect a feedback diode if you use the rl load so since i am going to explain only for r load i have not used the feedback diodes across all the devices if i uh, use the rl load then the feedback diodes has to be used otherwise uh, the energy stored in the inductance will be uh, will be dissipated in the devices and because of which the device can get uh, damaged or its life can be reduced so because of which uh, for rl load always we have to go with the diode across all the devices in order to feed back the energy that is stored in the inductance back to the source okay so that uh, that energy will be used for again uh, charging the battery or that can be given back to the source else that particular energy will be dissipated as heat in the transistors and the transistor life will get reduced and short circuits may also happen so because of which normally we use a diode across the transistors if we use an rl load so now in order to explain we are just going with the r load type of uh, 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 three phase inverter okay so here uh, you can see that uh, so six transistors are used okay so uh, the switches uh, so here what i am going to do is the switches will be turned on and off okay the switches will be turned on and off in some switching sequence so if i switch in a wrong way then you will not get the three phase output please remember if you switch so there are six switches and you can also see that the switches are named in some order which is this is t1 and this is t2 this is t3 and this is t4 this is t5 and this is t6 see you have to switch this in correct sequence uh, first t1 then t2 then 3 3 then t4 then t5 and t6 so if you switch in a wrong sequence then you will never get a three phase output waveform so the switching sequence plays a very vital role in order to produce the three phase output waveform that's very very important okay and this naming is very very important see for example if you name this t4 as t2 then that is also wrong so this diagonally opposite element that is t1 here t2 this is t3 and this is t4 and this is t5 and this is t6 this is how you want to name so naming is very very important in case of the three phase inverter so only according to this naming you have to give the switching sequence only if you give the correct switching sequence you will be getting the three phase output waveform else you will not get the three phase output waveform okay so that's what i just want to convey over here so here the switching sequence for example if you can if you uh, switch on t1 and t4 you can see you can see that r phase will be connected if you switch on t1 and t4 you can see that the source will be connected to r phase if you switch on t3 and t6 you can see that the source will be connected to y phase if i switch on t2 and t5 you can see that the from, from positive it is connected to so uh, the b phase okay so this is what you want to understand so as uh, and similarly if i connect t1 Uh, the positive terminal is connected to r phase if i connect t4 if i if i give the triggering pulse to t4 negative uh, of the battery is connected to the r phase so like that you can see that by switching on the upper transistors the positive voltage is given to the load while switching on the lower transistors the negative side of the voltage is connected to the load so this is what uh, very very important okay so the upper transistors produce the positive voltage whereas the lower transistors t2 t4 and t6 so upper transistor t1 t3 and t5 produces positive voltage whereas the lower transistors t4 t2 and t6 produces the negative voltage so with this introduction let us go okay into uh, 180 degree mode of conduction okay so here uh, i have given the switching sequence you can see that this is the switching sequence so from this you can observe that for Uh, in case of what is, can you see that the difference okay so this is the 180 degree mode of conduction this is the 120 degree mode of conduction and you can see that each and every transistor for example t1 t4 you know as i already told t1 will be producing the positive voltage t4 will be producing the negative voltage so both are switched on for 180 degree what is this 180 degree so output voltage waveform 
uh, is having positive and negative. So one positive is called as 180 degree and full negative is called as a uh, uh, next 180 degree and the total is the 360 degree. So uh, first for positive cycle, full positive cycle, this T1 is switched on and for the full negative cycle, T4 is switched on. So like this uh, for the next sequence. So if you add and you can see that uh, for first interval, if you check this first interval, you can see that fifth, sixth and first. So all will be in conduction. For example, if you take in the second interval, first will be in conduction, sixth will be in conduction and similarly, uh, two will start conducting. So because uh, after T1, T2 will be in conduction. So like that, you can see that from here, one, two, three, two, three, four. So one will be entering the uh, interval, the other will be leaving the interval. For example, uh, one, two, three. So here after uh, one leaves, four will be entering. And here in the fifth interval, you can see the two leaves and you can see that uh, five is entering. And similarly in sixth interval, you can see that uh, you can see the three will be leaving, whereas six will be entering. So then, uh, so totally there are six intervals in this case, okay, because 360 degree, so totally you will be having uh, six, so each and every interval will be 60 degree. So because of which uh, totally we will be having 360 degree. So six intervals are there. So five, six, one, six, one, two. So this is your switching sequence. If you change the switching sequence, you will never get the three phase output waveform. And the same switching sequence, you can see that it is getting repeated you can see that see 1 2 3 4 5 6 and similarly here also again 1 2 3 4 5 6 for first interval so this is getting repeated so this is the first uh, cycle and this is the second cycle it, it goes on it's uh, it's getting repeated okay so by repeating it you will be getting the three phase ac output waveform okay so here uh, this is how you switch on but anyway how we are getting the three phase output waveform is a different story where we have to analyze and we have to check uh, and similarly, so let us go into one by one. And similarly, you can see that, so here itself, I just want to convey, that is for 120 degree, you can see that there is a small gap between T1 and T4, whereas here there is no gap. That's why I say that there is a large chance of getting this short circuit. Whereas here, you can see that there is a small uh, gap between T1 and T4, and because of which it is 60 degree gap is there. So it is conducting, T1 is conducting only for 120 degree. T4 is also conducting only for 120 degree. So each and every device is conducting only for 120 degree in case of the 120 degree mode. Each and every device is conducting for 180 degree in case of 180 degree mode. That is the difference you want to understand. And here you can see that uh, in 180 degree mode, uh, each and every interval you will be having three devices uh, in conduction. For example, if you take first interval, it will be 561. Second interval, 612. Third interval, 123. Fourth interval, 234. Like that it goes on. Each and every interval, you'll be having uh, three devices uh, in uh, conduction. Whereas in case of 120 degree mode, you can see that for every interval, only two devices will be in conduction. For example, 6, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. So here you can see that only one uh, one will be going out and one will be going coming in. So totally two will be there. So here you can see that 1, 2. So 1 goes out and 3 comes in. Similarly, you can see that uh, when after that uh, 60 degree, uh, 2 goes out and 4 comes in, in 4th interval. Similarly, after 60 degree, this uh, 4, 5. So 4, 5. Uh, so you can see that 3 goes out and 5 comes in. Similarly, uh, on the 6th interval, you can see that 4 goes out and 6 comes in. So like that. At each and every interval, uh, one device comes in and comes out. But whereas in case of 120 degree mode of conduction, only two devices will be conduction uh, will be conduct in conduction for one interval. Whereas in case of uh, 180 degree mode, three devices will be in conduction. Okay, so this is and similarly you can see that uh, the same cycle will be repeating as in the case of 180 degree mode. You can see that one, two, three, four, five, six. So after that again one, two, three, four, five, six. The only difference between 180 degree mode and 120 degree mode is here you can see that both the uh, that is uh, all the uh, switching transistors will be in conduction only for 120 degree and there will be a 60 degree rest time and because of this the overheating of the devices will be absent similarly the short circuit between what t1 and t4 also will not be there so this is quite safe but the problem is the rating of the devices which we use in 120 degree is quite high when compared to 180 degree and because of which the cost also is quite high but uh, so since nowadays uh, the uh, 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 that is the safety is more prior when compared to the cost so we uh, most of them they are going for 120 degree mode of conduction Hope you are clear. Okay, so here uh, uh, that is, uh, for example, in case of uh, 180 degree mode of conduction, so each and every that is uh, switch pair in each leg will be turned on at 180 degree interval. That is S1 and S4 will be switched on at 180 degree interval. Whereas upper transistors will be switched on at 120 degree interval. You can just observe that. Okay. Hmm? Upper transistors will be switched on. So here you can see that between T1 and T3 it is 120 degree. Similarly, between T3 and T5 it is 120 degree. So upper between upper transistors it is 120 degree. Between the uh, transistors of the same leg it is switched on and off at 180 degree. 
is given. So this is what you want to understand. So like this. So each switch connects for. So similarly, um, the phase shift between each is 60 degrees. So every 60 degree, one uh, one SCR or one uh, switching device should go out. The other switching device should come in. So uh, this is so from the table uh, you can see that one more thing I just want to convey is at each instant you can see that either uh, two upper transistors are on and one lower transistor is on okay or one upper transistor and two lower transistors are on. So there is no way that either three all the three upper transistors are on or there is no way that all the three lower transistors are on. So either only three transistors are on in that case either it can be two upper transistor one lower transistor or one lower transistor and two upper transistor so like that goes on okay so this is how uh, the switching sequence takes place okay so let us go into the analysis so hope you're all clear okay so here uh, i'll just give you a small uh, so here i'm just going to explain for 180 degree mode then we'll go for the 120 degree mode so in case of 180 degree mode as i've already told you can see that uh, three transistors will be in on so let us case uh, let us take the first case so you can see that t1 t5 and t6 are in on condition okay so T1, T5 and T6 are in on condition, is it right? So you can see that in first case, 5, 6, 1 are in on condition. So 5, 6 and 1. So 5, 1, 1 are upper transistors, whereas 6 is lower transistor. So uh, this is how the circuit looks like. Whereas the other transistors like, uh, 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 what to say, that is uh, T3, T2 and uh, the other transistors like T2 are switched on. Okay, T2, T3 and uh, T5 are switched on. Uh, T, uh, T2, T3 and T4 are switched off. Is it right? So, whereas T1, T6 and T5 are switched on. Okay. So, here uh, if you just draw the equivalent circuit. So, you can see that this positive voltage is going through transistor. So, through R. So, you can see that R, R is pointed out here. And similarly, through this T5. So, this will behave as a short circuit when just you switch on. So, it is coming here. So, you can see that both the transistors are now in, sorry, both the resistors are now par parallel. R and B phase are now in parallel. Whereas, Y through Y, the returning is there. So, since I switch on this uh, T6, it is returning through here and to the negative terminal. So, it is, so this is how it looks like. Okay. So, your equivalent circuit can be something like this. That is, it will be having two upper transistors and one lower uh, transistors and because of which two uh, R and Y phase, are, R and B phase are connected to the positive terminal whereas Y phase is connected to the negative terminal and your equivalent circuit will be looking something like this. So, similarly, you want to draw the equivalent circuit for all the switching sequence only then you can find the how the output voltage is uh, looking like okay so let us go uh, one by one so here you can see that in first sequence it is uh, this, this is the analysis okay analysis of 180, 180 degree mode of conduction so here uh, uh, i will just zoom in so here you can see that uh, when 5 6 1 are on condition you can see that uh, this is the actual uh, equivalent circuit and uh, your output voltage, you just calculate the output voltage. Okay, you can just uh, see that the output voltage V R Y. You will see that when you uh, when you calculate the V R Y, you will be getting V S. Okay, when you so you can see that V R Y is nothing but V S will be applied. Similarly, the phase voltage that is V R N. If you just calculate V R N, it will be V S by three. You just apply the Kirchhoff's law. You can see that you'll be having V S by three. Okay, because all the three are in parallel, and you can see that uh, V S by three will be uh, there okay so similarly uh, you can see that when you uh, go to the switching sequence 612 again you can see that the line voltage will be vs and here it will be 2 vs by 3 so you can just go with this uh, third interval 1 2 3 so again you can see that the uh, line voltage will be 0 whereas the phase voltage will be Vs by 3. So, 2, 3, 4. So, this is nothing but you can just refer the book. Okay. I cannot uh, because in PPT, this is the limitation. Okay. So, I can just uh, show you what are the different uh, uh, voltages. But just by applying the Kirchhoff's voltage law, you will be getting the different voltage for different intervals. So, you will be getting the uh, something like this. Okay. So, similarly, uh, if you just uh, go to the next. Okay. So, you can see. So, you just uh, plot this. Okay. So, this is the switching waveform on top. You can see that this is a switching waveform on the top. So, for example, T1 is switched on for 180 degree and similarly T2 after 60 degree it is getting switched on, T3 after again after 60 degree it is getting switched on, T4 again after 60 degree it is getting switched on, T5 again after, uh, so each and every device is having 60 degree interval and similarly you can see that uh, T1 and T4 will be 180 degree out of conduction. So, for example, T1 for 
positive cycle whereas t4 will be for negative cycle so if you just uh, plot you can see that uh, the output voltage will be something like this okay so you'll be getting a, a quasi uh, square waveform for the line voltage whereas you can see that for uh, phase voltage you'll be getting if you just plot it you will be getting a waveform something like a stepped one so here you can see that the both the waveforms will be exactly okay you can see that both the waveforms will be exactly 30 degree out of phase so it is something similar to your uh, line voltage and phase voltage uh, will be having the phase difference of 30 degree whereas the, so similarly here also the line voltage and phase uh, phase voltage will be having a phase difference of 30 degree so uh, it resembles okay so if you go for the other cases like you know for vy so similarly for vb and similarly so you can see that you'll be getting a waveform something like this and you can see that uh, for vy and vb both are you can see that 120 degree out of phase is there so here it is getting so this is each and every uh, interval is 60 degree so this is 160 degree this is another 160 degree and you can see that 120 degree out of phase is there it's very simple to draw okay so uh, three phase output we have achieved and similarly this is this will be a current waveform if it is a, a resistive load if it is a inductive load then a slight lag will be there based on the magnitude of the inductance so this is how it looks like so next we will move on with the 120 degree mode of conduction so in case of 120 degree mode of conduction uh, two transistors will be on at a time at any interval two transistors will be on so you can already we have discussed the switching sequence will be t1 and t6 so if you switch on t1 and t6 okay so you can just uh, can just see yeah so you can just see that uh, t1 and t6 are switched on okay uh, you can see that only r and y will be connected whereas uh, b phase will not be connected uh, to the supply and because of which so your uh, equivalent circuit will be something like this so pause to r and here n and here y okay so you can see that pause to and transistor and through this r is connected and y is connected through the t6 so y is connected to negative whereas r is connected to pause to and b phase is not yet connected because uh, there is no transistor switched on in the third leg only the first and second leg the transistors are switched on so your equivalent circuit will be looking like this so similarly each and every sequence will be having its own uh, equivalent circuit again you have to apply the kvl so you can see that uh, by applying the kvl so i will just zoom in here so you can see that uh, 6 and 1 will be conducting so it will be looking something like this so you just apply the kirchhoff's uh, voltage law and you can see that the line voltage will be that is across r and y will be vs is it right whereas uh, the phase voltage uh, phase voltage that is uh, r uh, v r n is it right so it will be vs by 2 so in second interval again uh, vs by so you can just observe vs by 2 and vs by 2 so like that it goes on you can just see that in third interval again it is minus vs by 2 and 0 and similarly in fourth interval it is minus vs and minus vs by 2 it is very simple uh, it is quite uh, also very easy when compared to the 180 degree mode of conduction because only two two uh, transistors are on and so only two uh, phases are connected the other phase will be uh, open circuited so it's very simple to analyze the circuit okay when compared to 180 degree mode of conduction so this is how this uh, one 120 degree mode of conduction looks like so after uh, this what we have to do is we have to go for uh, plotting the waveform so if you just plot the waveform you can see that here again the switching sequence so each and every transistor is switched on only for 120 degree whereas in case of 180 degree the transistor t1 will be on for 180 degree t2 will be on for 1, uh, 180 degree and you can see that the transistors in the same leg will be having 60 degrees gap so this is uh, the gap uh, which allows that transistors to take some rest or uh, because it will not be in continuous on and there will be no short circuit or something like that so because of which uh, the thing is the transistors will not be overheated so the main problem is we have to uh, go for quite higher rating because the transistor utility is quite less and because of which the higher rating transistors uh, are needed in order to achieve the same uh, waveform and here you can see that the output voltage is vs plus vs and minus vs and uh, so this is how the load uh, voltage waveform line voltage uh, waveform looks like vry and uh, next we will move on with uh, phase voltage so you just plot this waveform you'll be getting something like this okay so this is how the waveforms looks like okay so here you can see that uh, between y and b you can see that 120 degree out of phase is there and similarly between the phase voltage and line voltage also you can see that uh, uh, 30 degree uh, phase shift is there okay between the phase so this is your uh, line voltage and this is your phase voltage and you can see the 30 degree phase shift is there and because of which we say that this is nothing but a three phase waveform okay so this is how uh, it looks like okay so just in order to have some small comparison so you can see that in case of 180 degree mode each conduct, each device conducts for 180 degree whereas in case of 120 degree mode it is uh, each device will be conducting for 120 degree whereas here the number of devices that is conducting uh, for each and every interval will be three devices whereas here it will be two devices so here we are line voltage will be of quasi square waveform 
and whereas in case of uh, line voltage in case of 120 degree mode it will be a 6 step waveform similarly the phase voltages will be of 6 step uh, voltage 6 step waveform for in case of 180 degree mode of conduction and whereas quasi square waveform for the 120 degree mode of conduction so here the this is what the main thing that's the cross conduction is possible that is the uh, transistors in the same leg may uh, trigger at the same time and which will cause a short circuit but here that is not possible because uh, we are already giving some 60 degree difference okay 60 degree and similarly the device utilization is better and uh, so whereas here in case of 120 degree mode the device utilization is uh, quite low whereas in case of the output power is quite higher because of higher voltage level and say the output power is quite less okay so here the line uh, rms will be given as uh, vs into root 2 uh, for 2, 2 by 3 whereas it is, it is nothing but vs by root 2 similarly the rms voltage is uh, 0 0.7797 into vs here it is nothing but 0 0.6752 into vs so in order to achieve the same so we have to go for higher rating that's what i just uh, conveyed here okay so I hope I've given you a basic idea and uh, some analysis regarding this 120 degree and 180 degree mode of conduction. If you want more uh, insights, you can just refer the books and whatever I've said, it will be there. So I'm sure uh, you, uh, if, uh, you, if you really like this video, please give a thumbs up to this uh, video. And uh, if you have any comments also, you can just uh, comment. And similarly, if you find this video useful to someone else, you can just share it. And as well, uh, if you really like the videos which I post in this uh, channel, you please subscribe to my channel, uh, which will be a motivation for me to put uh, more number of future, uh, more number of videos in the near future. So thank you very much. Thank you.